Business Matters is brought to you in part by Lion Burger Construction and Berglund Center, where live entertainment lives in the Roanoke Valley. Hello and welcome to Business Matters, a program on Blue Ridge PBS that strives to explore that subject from a variety of viewpoints and scenarios, featuring interviews with the people helping to grow jobs, the economy, and the Blue Ridge region because business matters. I'm Gene Morano. Our guests today are the management team behind one of the country's premier boutique music and outdoor festivals, Floyd Fest. Sam Calhoun is the chief operating officer, John McBroom is the CEO, and Chris Hodges is the founder and chief creative officer. Welcome, guys. Thanks for, Thanks for having, having us. Having us well, we see you up on the mountain, but it's, it's kind of nice to have you here. Well, let's get started, Chris. Talk about, this is 20 years this year for Floyd Fest. Correct, more or less. More uh, or less we're, right. we're calling it the 22nd year. Okay. Um, but anyway, let's talk about how the idea got germinated. Well, so back in uh, 2000, uh, you know, the idea to throw a nationally recognized music festival to bring attention to the Appalachian region was very much in play from my time spent uh, living on a community up in Floyd. It was a music and arts community, um, and my mentor, Court Basin, of course, was a, a wonderful artist, and that's kind of where the seed was planted, <clears throat> germinated, and it was because of the love of music but it was also uh, an intentional experiment on community and the effect uh, that community could have uh, in a gathering with music and art and um, to reach the national stage and, and that was really uh, what Floyd Fest uh, came from, the vision. You were a pretty young lad at the time. Um, oh yeah. How did you start rolling out that idea and how did you get these guys involved? So I told myself uh, at, 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 uh, on the early onset of, of trying to get this thing off the ground that as long as I approached it with uh, honesty, uh, sincerity, a passion that was unbridled and you know, a focus uh, with a proper positive intention for doing it for all the right reasons, I would attract the proper people because when you start this thing as an artist, you know, you don't have the, the financial backing or you, and you don't have necessarily the wide uh, uh, stretching network that one would need to put this thing on. So because I've been in the music industry most of my uh, young adult life, I, I knew the ins and outs on how to uh, connect with other industry players. But as far as the community and the support that I needed, I just put my best foot forward and knew that that would attract the right folks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you're a drummer, of, drummer, of course. Drum uh, of course, I studied uh, engineering, I've studied um, uh, songwriting, guitar, you name it. I've played all across the country uh, in all kinds of various scenarios and situations. And I knew I, I could not personally be a touring musician. That was not what was in the cards for me. I wanted more of a, uh, a, 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 a kind of a localized uh, lifestyle with a family. So mm -hmm. that's why I stayed in the area and I decided, how can I get the best of both worlds? How can I stay in the music industry, make an impact socially, uh, through music and art and still uh, mm -hmm. have the joy of raising my family and being at home. And John McBroom, you are, you're the CEO now, but you mm -hmm. were, you, early on you got, you were involved with some of your bands, uh, Blue um, Mule, you've been up well, there, I, Goat. I, I, I came in, I guess, year one, towards the end of year one as a consultant and a bit of an investor. And then I think it was, what was it, uh, uh, end of year two, Sunday, I asked if I could come in. I, you know, I think Chris and I kind of come from a similar background in production, in that we started producing stuff so that we could go play our music. Um, and so I asked Chris if I could come in, and, and uh, I started managing. What was it Hill Holler, or was it the? Sh it might have been the Showcase stage back at that point. Yeah, I think the, the very early first years, year. It was um, called Showcase right. and then Hill Holler. You and then, the stage and, and I came on as stage manager there, and then moved to main stage manager. Um, and then became production manager, and um, <clears throat> and then here I find myself as CEO <laughs> uh, with these crazy fellows. But um, no, it's been uh, 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 a dream come true to to um, you know, like I said, we all started doing this stuff to so we could play our music, so we could be part of the music, mm -hmm. um, and um, to have something like this. I've always you know always dreamed about having a a festival in my backyard, and we have a festival in our right. backyard, and, and we get to work at it, and uh, uh, it's, you know. It's close enough to, if that if you're in Roanoke or Blacksburg, whatever, you just have a day pass, you can go up there and yeah. you'll be home in an hour. 
So oh, that's yeah. Not mm -hmm. only do we want to reach a national stage and internationally, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we reach seven to eight countries at this point. Yeah. Um, but we want to make sure that the local community feels a part of it as yeah. well. And that's why we do the On the Rise series, mm -hmm. which really, and the local love, right, yeah. uh, which really, you know, pays uh, respect to all the local talent that's yeah. here in the region. Mm -hmm. How'd you get involved, Sam? Yeah, I was late to the party uh, in comparison to these guys over here. I've always wanted to do this. I feel very grateful uh, to be in the position I'm in. Um, I threw my own success, unsuccessful festivals in Boone, North Carolina for many years. I was a journalist. I was an actor. And so I didn't really come on in the full-time sense until like 2014. Okay. Which seems like yesterday, but now I think about it, it's been about eight years. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, what what end of the business do you handle as an operating officer? <clears throat> Everything. Oh, right. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. That <laughs> seems like one of those catch-all If we didn't have this gentleman... <laughs> I'll just go dot, dot, dot. <laughs> well, that's very nice of you to say. Yeah, I mean, day to day, I guess, is, is how it goes. But I think we all bond together as a team. The core four, you know, the one we're missing here is Jessica Taylor, who yeah. does a lot of work for us as well. Mm -hmm. And so these, you're looking at this plus Jessica, really pu puts this together. And, you know, by the time the festival comes on, we have a thousand people helping us. You know, we have 600 volunteers, 400 staff. And that also is a huge business matter situation, I believe, because we really do support these. These people come from the local community from Roanoke, from Blacksburg, from Christiansburg, from Floyd. And then we've become the biggest city, you know, in Floyd and almost Southwest Virginia at times. Really? You've got 13, 14, 15,000 people up there. It is a mini city, yeah. by far the biggest thing in Floyd County. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. And Patrick County as well. Patrick we, we County, really, it really border. is in Patrick County, correct? Well, sort of on the line? Depends on who you ask, even the counties. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's kind of half and half. Or, yes, we no. have a Floyd County address board in Patrick right, County. Right, 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 right. Well, Floyd we County are, we are cool. bipartisan. Yes, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just wondering at this point, you know, uh, are there a lot of fires to put out at this point, or is pretty much everything pretty much smooth as far as year to year? Give me some insight here. You know, it's, um, it's never, there's never a dull moment when you're running a small city, as you can imagine. There are mm -hmm. always going to be challenges, and I think that's what keeps us hungry. And, and, and alert and present to make sure that we provide the best experience possible for people. Um, these challenges uh, drive us to excel. Mm -hmm. This has always been a risky business, right? Mm -hmm. And the challenges we're seeing coming out of the pandemic are brand new. And so every day is a challenge. We're seeing supply chain issues. Really? Um, and mm -hmm. it, was, it was just tough enough navigating the pandemic. We, I feel very good. We did it very successfully as a team and as a festival as well for our patrons. But now we're seeing brand new challenges come out of that. It's a whole new world mm -hmm. that we're, we're operating in. But I think that's true for every business in, in, this, in this day and age. How is supply chain issues affecting Floyd Fest? Is it, for, uh, is it getting equipment or, or, or what? All of the above. All really? of the above. If you think about building the city, we're talking about building the city. Every single thing that went into that probably is 30% higher right now. You know, from really? golf carts to power supply. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and the bodies. music industry is still reeling from a loss of income that, that took place over basically two mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. from the pandemic. So it's, it's affected things, but, you know, the team, we go back to that, you know, the team. Teamwork makes the dream work. That was the number one thing that struck me immediately when the pandemic hit. What, is, what are the quality, what is the quality of our relationships? You know, so you go to your team. We developed four distinct goals right when the pandemic hit. And um, by the end of um, 2021, we had met all four goals. Mm -hmm. Yeah, teamwork really is the basis of running a successful business. How hard was it, start with you, John, to, to, to have to shut down and not have the festival in 2020? I mean, did you, push that as long as you could before you guys made a decision? Um, I would say in some ways we wanted to see exactly, you know, um, how long. Um, but the main thing I think was just to keep a little hope alive until... That's what it's all about. And, and, and not, you know, um, I think we made the announcement, what was it? May 15th. May 15th. I was going to say May 1st, but, you know, we made it May 15th. Um, yeah, it was, it was devastating. It was uh, a world that we didn't understand. Mm -hmm. um, but I will have to say that the, um, uh, and I'm, I can't speak for these two gentlemen, but from what I kind of witnessed from a, a, a slightly, you know, a, a, a back seat, um, everyone kind of came together to, to help everyone to try and make it through at that point, mm -hmm. for the most part. And it allowed us to, um, uh, you know, 2021 was... Uh, Seemed like it was pretty much back to normal uh, for the most part. It, that, but the, the, the sense of appreciation and love and, and just being back up on that hillside was... Uh, <laughs> I think I, it's our jobs to make it 
look like it's normal. Right, right, right. <laughs> but, but, but no, it was uh, just the appreciation factor went up exponentially. I sort of got that vibe last year that there were a lot of very, very happy people yeah. to see the reunion. Yeah, you know, I think a lot of our patrons don't know an annual cycle without Floyd Fest now. We're very lucky that they come back year after year after year. Yeah. And like John said, we did hold out. But I will say one of the things that our, our festival, I think, did well was we were one of the very first to announce that we were postponing. And then we were one of the very first to offer the refunds and rollovers. And then we were one of the very first to announce our first headliner at that time, which was the Ava Brothers. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that happened by, I believe, July 15th. Right. Right? And I know you were very grateful about that, for the Ava Brothers coming up. Incredibly out grateful. Oh, yeah. and once again, the quality of your relationships. They came and played uh, one of our On the Rise series for free back in the day. And I've stayed in um, good good contact and mm -hmm. good graces with the team and they're great guys and mm -hmm. great management mm -hmm. and they do it for all the right reasons as well. So coming together and them coming on board that early uh, was a real show of uh, strength in the community of music. Mm -hmm. I think they're out of sort of your neck of the woods, David Brother, correct? They're down there in the Cornelius area. Okay. Yeah. I'm just wondering last year, well, again it seemed pretty much normal, but were there still bands or performers that did not want to tour last year that turned you down? Um, well, only because COVID was a factor right. when, you know, one of the members had COVID or a couple of the tournament, like Whiskey Myers had to, you know, drop out um, literally the week of the festival. Wow. Um, that, that does happen. But, um, you know, I think a lot of musicians were eager to get out there and play. So that's why I couldn't find them when I was looking for them. Whiskey Myers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And I think they're coming to Berglund's, uh, or no, Salem Civic Center here shortly. So mm -hmm. you can catch them there. Right. Yeah. Talk about the On the Rise series. And it, it, it sort of started as a battle of the bands, you had a mm -hmm. local club for a while, we were mm -hmm. doing that, and basically people get to vote on who appeared at Floyd Fest, and then now it's basically on-site at Floyd Fest where people can vote for their top on-the-rise bands, and one of the things they get is a gig on the main stage. Talk about that, and some of the gems you've uncovered, you guys. You know, so being a performer myself, um, I wanted to make it a win-win. You know, I understand how difficult it is for these uh, young bands to get noticed, to understand how to navigate the industry, so forth and so on. So, and I realized as a musician that most of my musician buddies did not know how to navigate the business world of music. So I took it upon myself to truly absorb that and make that an art in and of itself mm -hmm. and to provide a stage that not only attracted thousands of people, right, that were already coming to see the headliners, but that those people could actually witness the hunger and the passion of young and upcoming bands. And I, I get hit up by so many bands, so many artists from across the country, it's like, well, I cannot afford to provide a festival that won't sell tickets for, you know, without a headliner. So how do I develop a series um, uh, that can showcase these up and coming bands that no one's heard about? Mm -hmm. um, so the On The Rise series was born, I think it was called Under The Radar initially, right. and then we changed it to On The Rise. Um, and the Aver Brothers are one great example. Morgan Wade, who's a Floyd native, is another example. She's Papa big time Dozio, yeah. who mm -hmm. plays na internationally, uh, EDM kind of crossover rock band. They were an On The Rise artist. So uh, Megan Jean and the, and, the, and, and, and the KFB, mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. um, tons of bands have come through the ranks. And now, you know, Floyd Fest is being recognized from agencies from William Morris to Wasserman um, uh, to New Frontier to all the boutique agencies in Nashville as okay, who is the winner that Floyd Fest has because we want to sign them and get them on our roster. Um, so the On the Rise series is, is really the lifeblood of what we do at Floyd Fest, mm -hmm. for sure. Um, and now that I'm stuck being a talent buyer and a promoter, uh, I am here to uh, you know steward these uh, uh, careers of these young artists that I love. I, I don't play, I play locally now and I love to, I don't have to do it for a living right. anymore. But um, having a space and a stage uh, that provides uh, a conduit for these up-and-coming artists mm -hmm. is very important to us at Floyd Fest. You gonna be on the drums at all this summer? Absolutely. I'll be playing with the Chupacabras. Okay. I'll be playing with uh, McBroom um, and the Jam and uh, a few other acts. But you know, I'm there to provide the show um, for the other people. So I try to limit that stage time a little bit. But when I get on stage, I give it everything. Oh I yeah. Have. Yeah, I just love watching you drum. I'm, I like watching drummers anyway. So. I love you're drums. You're kind of maniacal when you get up. Oh, there. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when I play, I want to entertain. I want to uh, entertain. It's a show. Yeah. Right? It's like theater. <clears throat> you know, it's just like when you get up and, and want to do theater, you want to bring people out of their day to day and give them something spectacular. Mm -hmm. That's how, how I approach it. I was wondering, how, how long did it really take Floyd Fest to really gain momentum? Joe, 
Well, it was seven years we finally broke even. It really? took seven years of beans and rice and determination. And I think every hungry artist, you want to stay hungry. So to me, it's just part of the gig. You know, so year seven, we broke even, uh, started turning a profit, uh, I would say, in year, you know, eight through ten. Uh, and it's just gone up ever since. It's mm. been wonderful. Is that, is that, John, is that sort of normal for a lot of festivals? I don't know if you talk to other people that run festivals or does it take them a while? Um, well, I would say when we, when, when Chris started this, festivals like this probably weren't as prevalent as they are now. Mm -hmm. um, and not many have been able to define the, the, the um, sustainability the 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 long term so mm -hmm. um uh, for perspective of course bonnaroo started around the same yeah. time it started the exact same year yeah. was it was the same <laughs> it was year? 2002 mm -hmm. and oh, i was wow. like well dog gone it here we go well that's like 200,000 people that show up for that or something uh, that's, used that's, that's to. Different, different types of bands well, that, they yeah. ballooned up and then they reduced yeah, yeah. and then they reduced um, they did okay i think floyd fest and with you know people like sam john jessica taylor um, we have really been the leaders in sustainability on how to throw a festival. And I can say that I've worked most festivals around where we never wanted to become incredibly huge. We wanted to be smaller than, than you know, just a, a, a local festival. We wanted to reach uh, a national audience. And I'd, I'd say that yeah. we have a formula that works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's incredible. Yeah. The quality of this team is just, well, it's unmatched. One of the things that, you know, to kind of add to the, the, the R and the Rise is, um, I remember in the early years when I first started going and, 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 and working the festival, I'd be like, well, who are these bands? You know, where, where, where do you find these people? Right. And I've been walking around that site for you know, a long time, and I can't think of a time when I didn't walk up to a stage going, wow. I, you know, I have no idea who these people are. I have no idea where they, where they, where they come from. But the music is always, uh, uh, the curation of it, the thought put into the, um, uh, just that. But I think that was the, the thing that started bringing people. And then I think, like Sam said just a second ago, it's a family reunion. So being on that mountaintop, once you've been on the mountaintop, then you understand what it is. Mm -hmm. You want to come back. And, right, but, it, you know, while the headliners and all the artists are, are the lifeblood of our festival, I think there's even more to it than just, if, 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 if that makes sense. Being up on that mountain is special. Being a, um, uh, an early attendee, um, someone that's worked the festival, and someone, especially as a musician playing the festival, the love that, that the musicians get. Mm -hmm. You know, right, that um, was a tenant of ours, treat musicians as royalty. Right, right, but if I'm just they saying. they feel that good, they right. give it out. Right. No, the but they definitely give it out, but I'm just saying naturally what, I mean, you know, I've been playing music since I was 18, and um, uh, when a crowd uh, gives you that, that sort of attention, just paying attention, uh, the, the, the love, the, you can feel it. I mean, it's, it, it, it's something that mm -hmm. is... Um, you know what Mike Goudreau said once? And he was um, part of uh, uh, um, uh, Dreaming Creek Timber Framers who built our built the main, main stage, stage yeah, right, yeah, yeah. back in 2004, which was a miracle in I and of itself. I remember the old stage, yeah, it was, yeah. you know. He said to me, and it was a few years ago, he said, Chris, these artists, I can tell, are giving way more right, yeah. at this festival than they would any other place. But and, and it's natural. not who you bring, it's how. Right. And that is a mantra that I use. Mm -hmm. If we set the stage, if customer service is impeccable, if the imaging is positive, is if every element of the festival in front of and behind the scenes is done with care and intention and for the right reasons, it will trickle and translate into an exceptional experience. Mm -hmm. And that's what we pride ourselves on mm -hmm. uh, uh, at a Crossway Production. I, I just have to say, uh, I don't listen to a lot of Spotify or whatever. I just don't have time, whatever. A lot of times when I'm writing at home or something, I'll just put classical on. But uh, when I go to Floyd Fest, I hear bands I've never heard before. And it's always, I mean, I'm not blowing smoke, but they're always really interesting and good. I usually go, come home with five or six CDs and I put it in my Excellent. 600 CD well, that's collection. what it's about. It's about discovery. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and, and is that mainly you putting those together? You seem to have a really good ear for I love. We all love music, but uh, I've been graced and blessed with the curation of the program, yes. And I love it. I tell people I listen to music for a living, and it tickles me to, to pieces. Yeah. Know? 
Yeah, I love it. I love music. I love the study of how music affects uh, human behavior. I love how uh, music affects gatherings and what it can do for social change and so forth and so, and so on. Music is the soundtrack to living one's life. Mm. Yeah. Talk about some of the niches of music n niches of that people who come to the Floyd Fest. It, it's across the board. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, we're in the Blue Ridge Mountains, Appalachian culture and music. We focus on old time and bluegrass and new grass, which I guess was, I want to say new grass was born out of Colorado, basically. Is that, um, is that, uh, is that a right? Or San Francisco or where? Uh, I don't know. New I'll, grass is a progressive form. Yeah, but yeah, it's, it, it, yeah. It, 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 it's taken the old band model. Right. And putting new... And putting um, a jam band spin to it. Right, right. Before know? there was really a jam band. Yeah, so, but, yeah. yeah, you know, th there's a that. The string music element is huge. Right. Um, Americana, which which is a coin term from Nashville, trying to figure out where to place these yeah. alt-country performers, you know? Yeah. Uh, we do a little bit of country. Uh, we do uh, rock and roll. We do uh, a little bit of world music. You know, it started as a world music festival, and I used to travel around the world trying to bring indigenous, you know, performers to the festival to kind of, like, showcase mm -hmm. what's going on around the world and how that kind of connects with the Appalachian music. Um, so we do it all, but I would say the lifeblood of what Floyd Fest is, it's going to focus on that acoustic driven sound because yeah. of our geographical location and the quality and the culture of that music, which we are proud to present. And I know um, there have been some bands or groups that basically got together for Floyd Fest or just, you know, that was their, one of the main gigs. I remember, I remember talking to uh, the guy from American Dumpster mm. when they came back one of the later years, he said, I'm bas we're basically together again because of Floyd Fest. I yeah, think. not only is it a Christian, reunion. Christian Breeden. The guy did all the welding. Did all the metal work and everything. He's out of outside of Charlottesville right. and he does a bunch of stuff for Burning Man. He is definitely a <laughs> color, colorful character for yeah. sure. Yeah. We attract that element because, you know, Floyd, of course, is a beautiful mix of um, uh, eccentric artists and incredible uh, farming community. So, yeah. you know, that's a wonderful, yeah. wonderful mix of people. Sam, talk about all the different stages you've got going there and, and making all that work. It is logistical uh, craziness. Is it eight stages now? Nine, if we consider. We have a bus now, a school bus, right. a psychedelic painted, you know, that we have oh. sessions in, the Floyd Fest bus stop. Um, but yes, eight stages scattered across that 80 acres. What's that like, just kind of coordinating that? You, you know, I think you do a good job of staggering sets so people can mm -hmm. listen to half an hour of one set, walk over, listen to, you know. Well, it really speaks to location, right? That we're in the Blue Ridge Mountains and we have those wonderful valleys and natural amphitheaters. So the uh, sound pollution, you know, is very well controlled on that site. That's a very interesting attribute that we have. And of course, the stages have always blended with the mountain landscape. It's not just throwing up, you know, a metal stage and calling it a day. Mm -hmm. It's having those things meld with the mountains. And you can see that. And that mm -hmm. throughout the year, we have looky loose coming through the parkway because you can see a beautiful vista um, over our, our sure. site. And so they want to see what that is. So we, the timber frame and then the green roofs. And uh, mm -hmm. I, I know when I drive up the floor, if I said, when you're driving in for the first time and you look down, and you see all those people there and all that, you get really pumped up like, wow, it's gonna be fun, yeah. that type of thing. It's so a I, special I vortex of magic yeah. that you mm -hmm. enter into. Yeah. And uh, as Sam was saying too, the vista uh, of the timber frame from uh, Dreaming yeah. Creek and uh, Streamline uh, Timber Works is just, it's, it's magnificent. Yeah. The aesthetics yeah. are just as important yeah. as every other element. And yeah. you're really sort of on this mountaintop that really sort of drops off on both sides. It's really kind of like a finger. Yeah. Yeah. I think that there's probably no festival in America that benefited more from the invention of the drone. You know, <laughs> <laughs> the drone comes out of the valley and over our festival site. I mean, it's all inspiring, you yeah. know, and there's nothing that can match that. And I think that, for instance, I'd say 80% before the drone, 80% of our patrons had no idea that the drop off was like that. Well, we're up yeah. there in the winter and we're working. We could see it because the leaves are off the trees. Right. You know, and then the drive up there. But the perspective is just, it's all inspiring. It's, yeah. an, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I know you've called uh, Floyd Fest a boutique festival. I think at one point, maybe a couple of years, it got really sort of, kind of big and then you kind of back down a little bit. So do you like what the niche you're at now? What niche you kind of we occupy? We are perfect. You know, it's funny. I was thinking about that on my run yesterday, Gene. Um, there's a floor and there's a ceiling. There is. No one wants to be Icarus. We know what happened to Icarus. Right. Um, and no one wants to be uh, six feet underground either. So we understand our parameters and we are very comfortable um, with those parameters. And we feel blessed to be able to provide a high quality experience to a limited number of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You um, never, yeah, you never want lines at the porta potties. You never want lines too long right. at the vendors. Or people you know? four hours to get their camping gear in that type mm -hmm. of thing, yeah. Yep. Um, just to talk about the, uh, we have about a minute and a half left, the, the theme this year. 
Floyd B, uh, Floyd Fest uh, heartbeat. heartbeat, and you always have a theme. What does that theme mean to you guys? Um, I can speak to it, meaning that as long as there's a heartbeat <laughs> in my chest, I will remain human and to share this wonderful experience in a positive way to be of benefit and of service to the world. And I mm -hmm. think that's what Floyd Fest, you know, is trying to be mm -hmm. for those that need, uh, uh, to uh, be part of the pulse. Yeah. To be part of the pulse, mm -hmm. part of a, part of something greater than themselves, uh, a gathering that feels wonderful and healing mm -hmm. yeah. real quickly. Uh, if people, and I don't know if there'll be any tickets left by the time this airs, but if people have not tried Floyd Fest, John, why should they try it this year or any year? Uh, come to the mountain one time and I think you'll come back every year. Mm -hmm. when, you, when you look back at the journey, 20 something years later, is it, is it, is it, did, were you confident that you'd be at this point when you started? Yes. I think once you commit to succeed, there's no other option. So it's not as though you even have a choice. You're driven. And I think with the power of, of, of good intentions and, uh, or doing it for the right reasons, mm -hmm. to doing it intentionally, I think, I think there's no stopping. I think it, it, it raises the bar to live to your fullest potential. And I think Floyd Fest has been that for me specifically. You know, there have been hiccups that were unforeseen. Mm -hmm. And at times when I was ready to just say, hey, I need, I need to hit the Appalachian Trail <laughs> and just like, you know, right. walk for a while. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sounds good. We're gonna have to leave it there. Floyd Fest 22 is this summer. And Chris, John, and Sam, thanks for joining us. Thank thanks, you, Gene. Gene. I'm Gene Moreno. Thanks for joining us. If you have any questions or show suggestions, email us at businessmatters at blueridgepbs.org. And if you missed any of our previous episodes, you can watch them on our website at blueridgepbs.org.